This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I'm very excited to talk about one of my favorite tools to work with inside of Media Composer and I'm talking about the Sapphire Builder tool. Now one thing I want to talk about specifically in this lesson is how we can integrate Mocha Pro into our Sapphire Builder workflow to create some very cool, very powerful composites by being able to utilize the matte functions out of Mocha and integrate them directly into Builder. Now you can see in front of you right now, I've created a little bit of an animation. It's almost like a color correction type of effect where I have the original shot with my worker who's wearing a yellow helmet. And this is a perfect example of you take everything, you shoot it, shoot it the way that you want. And then the client says, well, hang on a second, that helmet's not supposed to be yellow. It's supposed to be, in our case, red. So what do you do? Well, in a lot of cases you can do secondary color correction, things like that, but there are times where you're going to need to get in do some roto, send that work into a perfect effect like Builder to get in and do some color grading work. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in this lesson very quickly and very easily. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's head into Media Composer, Command or Alt and Tab on your keyboard. And once we're inside of Media Composer, you'll see that I have the shot already prepped to go in my timeline. Now I actually already have the Mocha Pro effect applied to the shot, but what I'm doing is just bypassing the shot or bypassing the effect just for right now just so we can get a little bit of a refresher, even though we just saw it a second ago, of the shot that we're going to be working with. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to step into effects mode. And once there, what we're going to do is we're going to head up and we're going to launch Mocha Pro because I want to show you just sort of the thought process that I went through when I was creating this element. Okay, now you'll see that basically what I have going on here is I actually did this as a two-step process. You'll see that I have two layers over here inside of the layers control window. What I actually did was I tracked the entire helmet and the head movement to begin with. So this way, any rotations, any movements up and down, I'm going to track first. So this way, when I went back and I did the actual roto with the helmet layer, it made my job a lot easier. And you can see the keyframes where I went in and adjusted the roto. Now, in a lot of cases, if you did this just as a regular, let's say you're using the animat effect, you went and did this point by point, you're talking about making changes at every keyframe. This made the process a heck of a lot easier when I was getting in and creating the roto. Now, I'm not going to get too much in depth as to how I got in and did this because I want to dedicate specific lessons just to talking about Mocha coming up in future episodes. One thing I do want to show you, and this is one thing that I love about Mocha and its flexibility, is the fact that it might be a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on with the mask that we have made. But we have the ability to actually see the mask by simply coming in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my spline tangents. I'm just going to head right to the next option to the left. I'm going to turn off the layer outlines. And I'm going to head right over here and I'm going to turn on show layer mats. And you can see now there is the actual matte element element that I made. And what I can even do here is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit just so you get a little bit of a better view. Now it's not the greatest of rotos because in certain places you'll see it just kind of drifts a little bit. You probably saw that in the intro, but that's okay. I was just putting this together pretty quickly just for the sake of showing it to you. Okay. So now that we've got this made, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quit out of Mocha Pro. I'm not going to save this because I had already saved it before. And I'm just going to turn off bypass. And once I do, you'll now immediately see that we have our mask element or our matte element. And we're now ready to integrate this into the builder tool or the S effect effect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new video layer, command or control Y. I'm going to take this clip from V1 and I'm going to copy it over here into the preview window by simply hitting Option or Alt and C on the keyboard. 
I'm just going to drop it in right on top because what's important to keep in mind is that when you're working with the S effect effect, any matte elements that you want to work with, you need to put on the layer directly below it. So what I'm going to do, just remove this effect and let's get the S effect effect to start working with. We're going to call it the effects palette, command or control and eight on the keyboard. I could search for it, but why would we do that? Well, I could simply type S underscore effect. There we go. There it is right there. I'm just going to take it, drag it and drop it down onto our clip. I'm going to step into effects mode and before we actually get into the builder tool, we need to tell the effect which layer we're using for our mat or our mask. And of course, it's the layer directly below. So right here, you'll see there's our mask element. I'm just going to choose the one track below option. Now, you're not going to notice anything happen because we haven't done anything inside of the actual builder tool. So let's get in and let me show you how this works. I'm going to navigate up to the edit effect option. Sapphire is going to load up the S effect effect or the builder tool. And once I have the builder tool here, you'll now see that I have the source I have the result and I have the mask element. Now, I believe the effect that I'm just going to use is a hue saturation effect. So much like with many parameters that we can get in and just search for, I'm just gonna type in hue and there's a hue saturation brightness effect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this down into my workspace. I'm just gonna position it between the source and the result. Because one thing I want to point out is that you'll notice that with this effect, I only have two nodes on it. I have the source node and I have the basically the output node going from the output of hue saturation brightness down to the result. So any adjustments that I'm going to make to the hue shift is going to happen to the entire effect. Now, many people think that this is kind of a deal breaker. Well, guess what? I guess you just can't use ma you know, mask elements with this effect. And that's not necessarily true. There are certain effects that actually have a mask or matte input node over here on the left hand side. Others, we just have to think a little bit outside of the box. What I'm going to do is just delete that effect. I'm just going to remove hue from the search option. I'm going to come all the way down to a category of the elements here or the nodes that you're going to be using all the time. And it's the tools located right down here at the bottom. The tool that we want to use is the blend tool. I'm going to take the blend tool. I'm going to drag it out here. I'm going to drop it in the workspace. And you'll now see that the blend tool has three input nodes. It has a source A. It has a source B, but more importantly for us, it has a matte element. Okay, so what we want to do to change the color of the mask is I'm going to disconnect the result node from the source and I'm going to take the source. And we're going to get let's get our hue saturation effect back again because I shouldn't have deleted that. I'll just type in hue. We'll just bring this out here. Okay, and I like to try to keep things pretty organized. So let's kind of have it like this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna have our source going into our hue saturation and brightness element or our node, our hue saturation and brightness node. I'm now gonna take the output of that node and we're gonna stick it into the source B input, okay? I'm now going to take the output of blend one. I'm gonna take that and drag it right down to the result, okay? Now, once I get in and start making a hue saturation adjustment change or a hue change, okay? You'll notice that this is kind of the red of the helmet, but everything else is still out of whack. Well, that's because I haven't added my mask or my matte element. What I'm going to do is take that mask element. I'm going to drag it down here. And as soon as I add it, what's going to happen is you'll notice nothing has changed because with this node selected, I'm only previewing its end result because I have that selected down here. Preview selected nodes. What I want to see is just the result. So you'll now see that what I'm getting is the source going into that hue saturation brightness node. The color is being changed by just taking the hue and just cranking it down a little bit. We're going into the source B input and then down to the results. Of course, that does beg the question, how do I get the background back? Well, to do that, all I'm going to do is take another output of the source node. You can have as many outputs of this as you want. And I'm going to bring it down here and drop it into the source A node input. As soon as I let go, the background is back. Our worker now has his red helmet. All I gotta now do is simply say okay, and boom, there's our worker now in the timeline with his red helmet. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this mat is essentially being generated in real time by the Mocha Pro plugin. So this is actually happening and being processed as we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this a very quick render here. And when it's done, I'll come back to the beginning. I'll hit play and you'll see there's our worker with his newly red helmet ready to go using the power of Mocha Pro inside a Media Composer and the Sapphire S-Effect or Builder tool.
Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.